Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking. And that is the Chanel GST in the black caviar leather and the gold hardware. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start work out, let's go to work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Natasha Tasha Tosh. Can you give me some tips on buying pre-loved? I have purchased a few things on one of the pre-loved sites and I'm afraid to buy anything other than excellent condition because I'm not sure whether very good would be good enough and there seems to be a pretty broad range of what constitutes very good. I'd love to hear what you look for in either pictures or in the description and why you might not buy something pre-loved based on the description. This is an awesome, awesome question and I agree with you because a lot of these consignment shops or these pre-loved shops, um, it is such a broad range when it comes to the condition of the item. Sometimes they say that it's an excellent condition and it's, it looks more like good condition uh, and other times it's labeled as very good and it seems to be pristine. So it's kind of like it's all over the place and it can be somewhat frustrating. Um, all right, so if you guys, um, this might be a little bit of a long answer. I will put a timestamp right around here if you guys want to skip to uh, to the next question. Uh, but some of the things that I that I look for when it comes to buying pre-loved that kind of deter me from wanting to move forward with it, the first one being structure loss. And with structure loss, especially when it comes to an all leather handbag, I kind of tend to stay away from it just because I feel like as the, as the bag starts to age, it will continue to age that same way. So if it already has creases on the sides, the creases will just get more intense as time goes by unless you end up using a purse organizer and you keep it in there all the time that really helps to maintain the shape but still that's always something that comes to mind as far as you know wanting to add any pre-loved handbag to my collection so structure loss the other one is yellowing and um I know that I have touched base on this before. Whenever you go for a lighter colored handbag, whether it's you know like a beige, a baby pink, white, or anything like that, anything along those lines, they do have a tendency to yellow as time goes by, especially if you wear it uh, a lot in the sun in the sunlight. Um, sometimes that sunlight ends up affecting how it starts to how it starts to age. So sometimes it might be a little bit more intense. Sometimes it might be a little less intense, but still they are a little bit more prone to uh, to yellowing. So I'm I'm not a big fan on yellowing handbags and when I was researching or actually when I was uh, looking at buying the GST and the Beige Claire, a lot of you know that I did have that bag. Um, a lot of the ones that I saw in the pre-love market had a lot of yellowing, especially around the corners. So it was a little bit harder to find one exactly the way that I had envisioned it and one that didn't have that yellowing. So that's another thing. Uh, the third thing being odor. Now with odor, I know that you can end up removing it somewhat. Um, it, it, I just find it to be a little bit fussy. I find it to be a little bit fussy to remove that odor because sometimes you are able to fully eliminate it and other times you have that lingering smell. Uh, so that kind of bugs me. So whenever I see odor on there or whenever I see like a musty smell or um, actually not necessarily a musty smell, but more so perfume, that to me is automatically no because perfume is such a personal thing. And if someone really likes this perfume a lot and it's something that doesn't really jive with what I end up going for, it might end up giving me a headache. And not only that, it might be a little bit more difficult to remove. So like I said previously, I know that sometimes with uh, with fragrances you are able to lift that smell but it's a little bit of a tedious maybe maybe i'm making it out bigger than what it is but sometimes it's a little bit more tedious to remove them than to not go for a bag that has any type of you know odor or what have you and the last one being authenticity cards date codes and serial numbers now as far as authenticity cards i'm also tend to be a stickler when it comes to chanel and i've said this in other videos uh, for me if it, if i'm looking at a chanel handbag and it doesn't come with the authenticity card it's automatically out of the runnings now that doesn't mean that a bag that doesn't come with an authenticity card is not authentic by any means whatsoever it's just one of the stipulations that i have when it comes to adding a chanel it somewhat gives me a little bit more peace of mind. Maybe that's crazy, um, but like I said, it definitely ends up giving me a little bit more peace of mind when I end up going the pre-love route. And as far as serial numbers and date codes, if a handbag doesn't have a legible date code or a, seal, uh, or a serial number, if the bag is not going to be a forever bag, and I know it's difficult to say forever bag because you don't know until you use it, 
or until you have it in your possession. Uh, but if the date code or serial number is illegible, it makes it that much harder if you go to sell it you know, in the future. If you're like, okay, I've had my fun with it, I've had it for six months, I've had it for a year. Uh, if it's hard to read the serial number or if it doesn't have um, a, a date code or anything like that, it might it might raise a little bit of doubt in whoever's purchasing it. So for me, I would rather not go down that avenue and I would rather have uh, the bag have the serial number, have the sticker or have the date code. So that way it's one less thing that the person has to worry about when they go to purchase a pre-love handbag. As I said before, I know that it can be quite frustrating. And another thing that you can end up doing, you can actually call the consignment shop and request more information, whether it's more info on the description or if you want more pictures. I have done that in the past with Yogi's Closet and Fashion File, and they were absolutely amazing. And uh, when I look at the pictures, if I see like a pop stitch or if I see residue, or if I see something that looks a little bit funky and it's not on the description, I will give them a call and I will say, hey, I noticed this in the picture. Are my eyes playing tricks on me or is it really there type of thing? And then uh, they're able to give me more info. But um, I think that's really amazing because when it comes to pre-loved goods, the last thing that you want is to be surprised with a type of condition that you end up getting, you know, because if they list it as excellent, you are expecting excellent. And then when you have it in your hands, it ends up being very good. And if they only have four or five pictures and uh, it doesn't show residue, it doesn't show this, that, or the other. And when you get it, it looks completely different on the other side. Now they kind of alter how, you know, the angle that they took the picture just to try to sell the bag, which is definitely not right. So that's why I always say ask questions, whether, you know, you're going through a pre-loved website or whether it's a place that you can call, um, ask for more pictures, whatever gives you peace of mind. But as far as the four things that I normally look at when it comes to adding any pre-loved handbag to my collection, uh, it is the structure, it is the serial number, authenticity card, odor, and, um, uh, the yellowing. I know the yellowing sometimes doesn't really apply because I'm not always looking for a light colored handbag, but uh, like I said, those are the ones that I end up looking for. But this is an awesome topic. I would love to hear, are there any stipulations that you have when it comes to adding a pre love handbag to your collection? And what are they? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to help. Next question from CS. I don't know how to pronounce your last name and I don't want to butcher it. Do you ever have the feeling after you just bought a new bag, you haven't even enjoyed it yet, but are already eyeing to buy the next bag? How did you get out of this rabbit hole? I want to be able to enjoy my bags. Yes, absolutely. I more so experienced this in the past, not so much now. And social media doesn't help either, right? You open up Instagram, you open up YouTube, and even though you're really excited about the bag that you just bought, you start to see something else that comes into your field of vision and you're like, ooh, what about that one? And this one starts to lose a little bit of its luster, at least for myself. I can only speak for myself. Um, but one of the things that ended up working out for me, and it might sound a little bit harsh, um, I ended up not, not forcing myself, because like I said, that sounds harsh, but I made myself use the bag that I just purchased before I researched anything else. And that really seemed to do the trick. Um, and I've also said this before that whenever I purchased a bag in the past, if I noticed that I wouldn't necessarily switch into it right away or I didn't have a specific date when I was going to debut it, I felt like that was kind of my gut instinct saying maybe this isn't for you, maybe it won't work out for my lifestyle, or maybe I kind of... Um, I kind of gave into the hype type of thing, you know, and the whole gimmies comes to mind. Uh, so for me, buying the bag and just putting those blinders on and using it really ended up helping out the best, you know, because I want to be able to enjoy them. Just like you said, I don't want to necessarily have something sit on my shelf. I don't want to just feel like I'm onto the next and onto the next and onto the next, you know. So I did experience that in the past and um, sometimes it worked out, other times um, I didn't have the best experiences, but moving forward ever since I started to implement that, it really ended up helping out and it allowed me to enjoy the bags that I recently purchased without necessarily worrying about anything else that was going on or wanting to research too much about this or too much about that. And trust me, I know that it's easier said than done. And it could also be the fact that I do add handbags to my collection a lot differently than I used to in the past. Um, but still, in a sense, being able to put blinders on and focus on the bag that I just purchased, being able to enjoy it, be able to take it out for a spin and kind of step away 
from reviews or anything like that that would kind of um, that would kind of push me towards wanting to add another bag to my collection really ended up helping out the best. But I would love to know, do you have a system in place when it comes to adding a new handbag before you add another one? You know, whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Lana Wells, what is your favorite non-Chanel black bag? I had the Antigona and I sold it because I found it was too cumbersome for my liking. I'm a speedy B25 casual type of gal. I wish Louis Vuitton would make a black canvas bag. I know, right? Oh, speaking of which, have you guys seen the newest, is it a speedy bandolier 30 in the Dame Graffiti? But the handles are red and blue if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if I can find a picture of it, I will insert it. Or if I can find an article, I will put it on the description box below. but I feel like we're getting that much closer. Fingers crossed, it's going to happen. It has to happen, right? I know that we've talked about this a million times, but it has to be either be Damien Graffiti or Monogram Eclipse and with the black handles, am I right? Anywho, as far as my favorite uh, non-Chanel black handbag, I do like the Antigona. Uh, it is quite spacious, but the fact that the strap that it comes with, I really don't end up using it. Um, it's more of a decorative piece. Um, it's kind of a bummer, but I will have to say that my heart belongs to this little guy, the Celine Nano Luggage Tote. I am crazy about it. I feel like I grin like an idiot from ear to ear every Every time I use it. I love the leather. I haven't had any issues with wear and tear. I haven't had any problems with varnish or anything like that. I've had it a little over a year and in that amount of time I've used it more than I use any of my other Celine's which is kind of crazy because I've always been a big big fan of uh, the Celine luggage tote line in general uh, but the fact that the Nano ended up working out the best for my lifestyle I think is awesome. So this little guy, the little robot face, um, I'm just crazy about it. It's small, but it still ends up packing a punch. I can end up fitting all of my daily essentials in there, no problem. Uh, the only con that I would have to say is the fact that it doesn't have an adjustable strap and the strap can be quite long. Um, but besides that, it is detachable, so you can use it this way, although I don't really end up using it like this too often. Uh, but that's the only con that I can think of for myself. Other than that, I haven't had any issues and I, I mean, I think it's super, super cute. I've heard some people say, oh, the Celine Anna luggage, it's so over, you know, it's not popular anymore. Um, whether it's popular or not, it is a classic to the fashion house, at least in my opinion. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm crazy about this bag. Absolutely crazy about it. But if you are looking for a smaller handbag, one that has a tad more versatility, not as much as others just because it doesn't have the adjustable strap as I had mentioned previously. But if you are looking for a smaller black one, I highly recommend the Nano because I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great silhouette, but it's all a matter of personal preference. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Ms. Juju. I've been thinking about getting a small bag and I'm stuck between the Alma BB or the Speedy Nano. I am totally stuck because I like the Speedy shape more than the Almas. However, the Alma BB has a detachable strap and I can carry more stuff. I can use both during the day or evening. Oh, I don't know what to do. What do you think? Before I get any further, let me insert a picture of both of these bags side by side. Both of these bags are so cute and I agree with you that the Alma BB does end up carrying a little bit more than the Speedy, but the Speedy is also very deceiving because it fits more than people might think. Now, even though the Alma BB does come with a one size fits all strap, I appreciate that it is detachable nonetheless, just like what you mentioned. And the Speedy Nano, I mean, I have been so intrigued by this bag since before it had its price increase. Uh, before the price increase, I think it was, what, 990 or 985 and after the price increase. I believe it's 1100 and it's so incredibly difficult to find here in the United States. Uh, but I, I think it is so, so cute. And it could be because I've always been a big fan of the mini HL. So the fact that this one does have a strap and it's pretty much the same size, if not a little bit bigger, um, I just think it's great. All right. Now this is where the crazy comes in and some of you might make fun of me. Uh, but even though I am almost a hundred percent sure that I would use this bag either as a crossbody bag or on my shoulder, I don't like the fact that someone made the decision for me. Does that make sense? I feel like I sound like a raging lunatic, you know, because I have other bags that really have no other way of carrying them and it, does, it doesn't really bother me. But the fact that I can't detach the strap or the fact that I can't adjust it just kind of drives me a little bit crazy, you know? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just me. Like I said, maybe I'm crazy. I have seen some people tie a knot on the strap so that when, when they go to put it on their shoulder, it ends up sitting a little bit higher, which I think is great. So it's not like you're 
hundred percent, you know, limited to how you can carry it. I just feel like why? Why not have it be detachable? And if you can't detach it, why not make it adjustable? I don't know, that's just me. But uh, I don't think you can go wrong with either bag. Like I said before, I think that they're so incredibly cute. It's just a matter if the fact that you can't detach the strap, if that drives you nuts, then I would go for the Alma. That way you can carry a little bit more. Or if you couldn't care less about not necessarily having a detachable strap, and you like the, uh, if you like the silhouette or the shape, as you mentioned previously, of the Speedy Nano, then go for that one. But uh, good luck deciding they are both beautiful. Fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Song Stit. I recently purchased a Coach Parker 18 in blush. It is my favorite at the moment. Fits all of my essentials and the color and design are beautiful. Are you still planning on purchasing a Parker? How do you feel about where Coach is heading? They have been stepping up their game. Um, all right, so first and foremost, congratulations on your Coach Parker. And before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this bag so we have a little bit more eye candy. It's beautiful, and with that hardware, I think it makes for a fabulous combination. Uh, but yes, I am still looking to add a Coach Parker to my collection, and the only reason why I haven't pulled the trigger is because I cannot decide on a color to save my life. I feel like half of me wants to go for white. White's the one that I talked about in my budget-friendly handbags a couple of months ago um, because I think it would look awesome for spring and summer. It adds a type of freshness to an outfit, plus I don't have a white handbag. However, another part of me is saying, no, go for a darker color. Go for it, one that you don't have to worry about color transfer or anything like that. So it's like my heart sings for the white, but my brain says, nope, you need something darker. So until I can fully decide, then that's when I'll end up pulling the trigger. Uh, but I think that the Parker is a beautiful, beautiful bag. It's very simple. I love the silhouette that it has. I know that they have a few different um, styles to choose from. Like some of them do have a bit more bells and whistles, but in general, I really, really like, um, I really like the size that it is as well. And let's not forget, it has a phenomenal, phenomenal price point. Uh, but Coach in general, I have always had a soft spot for them. I always will. And um, ever since they kind of revamped their brand, uh, you said it perfectly, they've been stepping it up. And it, I mean, it definitely shows. I feel like not only have they started to incorporate different silhouettes and different styles, they also have a bit more variety when it comes to leather. And the quality of that leather is, I mean, it is absolutely amazing. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't have quality leather before, uh, but you can really see a bit of a difference in, uh, in the direction that they're moving you know so I feel like it's only up from where they were before because they did have a bit of a slump um, a couple of years ago and uh, just to see them back where they were and just continuing to you know to reach for the top I think is absolutely phenomenal so like I said maybe it's because I've always been a big fan of coach uh, but the Parker is a beautiful beautiful bag and hopefully I can make up my mind uh, very soon but um, yes it's between either maybe going for the white, although I am also thinking about the blush now because ever since I saw this question, I started doing a little bit more research. Um, I don't think I wanna go for black. I really don't think I wanna go for black. I think I wanna go for, maybe I'll go for burgundy. I have no <laughs> I have no idea. But if you guys do have the Coach Parker, let us know in the comment section down below how it's wearing and do you recommend it? Whatever the case may be, the more information, the better. But fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Naturally Nolens. I purchased my first Louis Vuitton bag last year. It's a Neverfull GM and I absolutely love it. The problem is it's too big. I didn't consider how large that tote really is. I never wore it, so it's still in the dust bag and box that it came with. I cannot exchange it at the Louis Vuitton store, so I reached out to Fashion File a few months ago and they gave me a good deal on it, but I don't know if I should sell the bag and get another one I know I would use way more often. What do you think? Um, all right, so you purchased it last year and you've never used it. Uh, what I would end up doing, I would do a couple different things. Uh, the first one being that I would try it out one more time at home. I would end up putting the items that you would normally end up carrying with you, and that way you can solidify whether or not you want to detach from it. Because the last thing that you want to experience is uh, seller's remorse. You know, because if you have um, if you have any doubt in your mind, or if you think maybe I'll end up using maybe I'll end up using it down the road, maybe this, maybe that. You want to be able to fully detach from it so that you can sell it so that you don't experience that seller's remorse. And if you do decide to part ways with it, I would definitely end up putting that money towards another bag that you would use more often, just like what you had mentioned. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a Louis Vuitton bag either, because I think in the comment section you had said that even the MM Neverfull was, a, was just a tad too big. So I would take my time, I would go into different fashion houses, try out different handbags, or maybe just go back to your wish list and go from there, kind of do the whole pros and 
and cons and try those bags out and see what ends up working out the best for you and for your lifestyle. Because the last thing that you want to do is, uh, you know, kind of have that cycle come through again where you buy something and it ends up sitting on your shelf. So whatever ends up feeling comfortable to you when you do carry all of your essentials, uh, when you go shopping, then that's the one that I would end up going for. Um, but um, it's funny because a lot of these bags, a lot of them are insanely popular, but when push comes to shove, it's really a matter of what ends up working out for our lifestyles, you know? And if they're too big or if they have too many bells and whistles or what have you, it's always important to follow that and not and follow that and be able to enjoy the bag instead of it necessarily sitting on your shelf. At least that's the way that I see it. I know some people see it differently, um, but um, those are just my two cents. So good luck deciding if you end up getting rid of it and congratulations on whichever bag you decide to get if you go that route. But fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Tara Quinn. I am thinking about adding another Louis Vuitton bag, but I can't quite make up my mind between the Clooney BB Epi Leather in Noir and the My Lock Me in Noir. I love how understated the Clooney BB is, but I also love the organization of the My Lock Me. Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of both of these bags side by side. I think both of these bags are beautiful and I really don't think that you can go wrong with either one. I also appreciate how understated the Epi Clooney BB is because it's very simple and uh, I also like the fact that it is in the Epi leather because it makes it a little bit more carefree, it makes it a little bit more durable. However, out of the two, I actually prefer the My Lock Me and the reason I say that is kind of like what you mentioned. It does have a little bit more organization so I think that's awesome. I also don't feel it's too busy. I don't think it has too many bells and whistles. It is a tad busier than the Clooney, uh, but most importantly, I love the fact that it comes with an adjustable strap. And to me, the adjustable strap is really a game changer because you're not limited to, you know, carrying it one way, one length or anything like that. And even though the Clooney does have a generous, um, a generous strap drop when it comes to the uh, to the removable strap. I just like that the My Lock Me has an adjustable one. So that way you can make it shorter, you can make it longer, whatever it is that you need for the day or for the week or however you wanna carry it, you have that option. So I think that it really brings a lot more to the table. So like I said before, I think both of them are beautiful. You can't go wrong with either one. Just out of the two, my preference is the My Lock Me because it offers just a tad bit more. But a good luck deciding, fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to help. All right, you guys, that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.